It is enough for the disciple that he should be as his teacher, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, Satan, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear, persecutors, not therefore, for there is nothing covered, that shall not be revealed, and hid, that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness that speak you in light, and what you hear in the ear that publish you upon the housetops. Matthew chapter 10 verses 25 to 27. In today's words, what God revealed to you in a quiet place, don't keep it to yourselves, but do share it. And fear not them who kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear God which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear you not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Matthew chapter 10 verses 28, 31. In today's words, get to a place in God where you reverence him, knowing the fleshy body isn't all you're made up of, and you're ready to commit your unseen soul and spirit into God's hands in heaven, avoiding a real place called hell beneath. Whoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 10 verse 32. Let this serve as an answer to all those who believe, once saved always saved. Here Jesus commands us that we must confess him before witnesses not in secret. He that love father or mother more than me, is not worthy of me. And he that love son or daughter more than me, is not worthy of me. And he that take not his cross, and follow me, is not worthy of me. He that find his life shall lose it, and he that lose his life for my sake, shall find it. He that receive you, a disciple, receive me, and he that receive me, Jesus, receive, the Father that sent me. He that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever shall give to drink to one of these little ones a cup of cold water only, in the name of a disciple, surely, I say to you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Matthew chapter 10 verses 37 to 42. In today's words, by receiving and giving to a true disciple and prophet of Christ, is equal to receiving Jesus himself and the Heavenly Father literally, and by doing that, know that you'll also receive the same reward they'll receive. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. Jesus didn't stop anyone, no matter who or what they had done. He only simply said, come unto me, get under his yoke of freedom and learn from him. In the learning process one would truly renew their way of thinking, and their way of dealing with things. Notice Jesus said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, by being yoked up with Jesus. Please know, he'll bear the load and the only burden you'll have all the days of your life as, being light bearers in a dark and sadistic world. But I say to you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this mean, I will have mercy, and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. Matthew chapter 12 verses 6, 7. For it is written, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Do know the meaning of this statement, that you too may know and believe, it is God which continues to work in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 emphasis added, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scatters abroad. Matthew chapter 12 verse 30. From personal experience, I have surely encountered a group of people being under the influence of an unholy nature. Our God foresaw these things to warn us against them. So, believe me when I tell you, when Jesus says, whosoever isn't with him is against him. It's very factual, this is why Jesus says for us to, agree with our adversaries quickly, and do not fight against evil, yes, this I have experienced firsthand, and did cooperate not necessarily with them, but with God who taught me these truths. Even if you're right and the majority is wrong, whoever isn't with Christ is against Christ, and if anyone isn't gathering souls with him, his way are surely pushing them away further. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him.
But whoever speak against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt, and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Matthew chapter 12 verses 32, 33. In today's words, if good is coming from something, know that it's good, and if bad is coming from something, know it's bad. If the bad, try to pretend it's good, it can only pretend for so long till it shows its true colors. But I say to you, that for every idle, useless, word that men shall speak, they shall give account in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Matthew chapter 12 verses 36, 37. In today's words, Jesus is saying to be justified by your good words or be condemned by your wrong non-edifying words, it's your choice. And he, Jesus, spoke many things unto thee in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, Matthew chapter 13 verse 3 KJV. Emphasis on, Behold, look, pay attention to, this parable, for it is of great importance. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. Matthew chapter 13 verse 12. Jesus is saying here, Ask, and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. To those who seek after him, who is the bread of life, shall be satisfied in the days of famine. For it is written, Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Amos chapter 8 verses 11 to 13. This is why Jesus told the multitude that followed him, Labor not for the meat which perish, natural food, but for that meat, the word of God, which endure unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him has God the Father sealed, or kept secret, hid. See also, Luke chapter 10 verse 21. For in the last days, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 8, many will be, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. For whoever shall do the will of my Father who is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Matthew chapter 12 verse 50. In this saying, Jesus left it open for us to search out, what is the will of the Father? For it is written, Wherefore be you not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Jesus says here, to do the will of God, he wouldn't have told us to do his will. If he wouldn't have later revealed to his apostles what they were. Here's a few scriptures I found, stating what is the will of God. For you know what commandments we, the apostles, gave you by the Lord. Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, purification, that you should abstain from fornication, 1 Thessalonians 4-2, 3. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, allow, what is that good, thirtyfold, and acceptable, sixtyfold, and perfect, one hundredfold, will of God. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Matthew chapter 13 verse 8. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched the leper, and said unto him, I will, be you clean. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 14, 15, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 17, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, 
but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Matthew chapter 18 verse 14, 1. Timothy 2-4, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. For this people's heart has become gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, unless at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Matthew chapter 13 verse 15. In this, Jesus is basically saying repent, and, buy of me, Jesus, gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18 see also John chapter 9 verse 6. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom, and understand it not, then comes the wicked one, and catch away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that hear the word, and, at once, with joy receive it. Yet has he not root in himself, but endure for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, immediately, he is offended. He also that received seed among thorns as he that hear the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he became unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground as he that hear the word, and understand it, who also bear fruit, and bring forth, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Matthew chapter 13 verses 18 to 23. Another parable put, Jesus, forth unto, his disciples, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed, false grain, among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the false grain also. So, the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not plant good seed in your field? How is it that, it has, false grain? The Lord said to, his servants, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Will you then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, unless while you gather the, false grain, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather you first the false grain, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus answered and said unto his disciples, He that sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the false grain are the children of the wicked one, the enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the false grain are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this age. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30, 37 to 43. Jesus also said, Every plant, which my heavenly Father hasn't planted, shall be rooted up. This is a supernatural happening that will take place, so that, as he said, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun, obviously, these false grains, are hindering the true righteous ones from, shining bright to the world as they should. For so many to be removed so quickly and thrown into a furnace of fire, I wondered, could this happen as in the case with Angel of the Lord sent to slay Balaam with the sword? In, Numbers chapter 22 verse 32, 33. Notice again how it says in verse 25 of Matthew chapter 13, But when men slept, Satan, came and sowed, false grains. Paul warned about this happening when he said in, Acts chapter 20 verse 28, 31. When he said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. 
Therefore watch, and remember, that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul also was shown by the Lord of how he would get the, false, out from among the true, when he wrote to the Thessalonians saying, Be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there comes a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 2, 3. This falling away he spoke about, either it will happen through the example of Balaam, or as shown in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, when it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, Antichrist, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus showed this as well, when he said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all men in all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Could it happen through being offended and not willing to give their lives for Christ? You decide, but all I all, seeing we know this, let's all gear up, and pray that we don't enter into temptation as the apostles did when it was Jesus' time to be afflicted for the sake of the cross. For it is written, The fire shall try every man, every man's work shall be made, known, for the day shall declare it, how they built upon Christ. No doubt these will be future events, where it will require some type of technology for all men in all nations to hate true believers all at once. Here's more proof of this in Revelation chapter 11 verses 9, 10, when it says, And they of the people and clans, tribes, and tongues and nations shall see, the Lord's two witnesses, dead bodies three and a half days, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice ever them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Emphasis added. Notice how it says, all these nations shall see this event happening all at one time. Surely this could only be made possible through satellite capability, you decide. Matthew chapter 24 verses 9, 10, Luke chapter 21 verses 16 to 19. Read also. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 17, 15 to 2 and Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 12 for more of an understanding on this subject. Another parable Jesus spoke to them, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. Matthew chapter 13 verse 33. In today's words, Jesus is saying for us to take of the leaven of heaven and hide it in our hearts till we be filled with the fullness of God. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field, which, when a man has found, he hide, and for joy thereof goes and sell all that he has, and buy that field. Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. In today's words, Jesus is saying to find this treasure and hide in our hearts, and if you want it bad enough sell everything you have to buy the field where you found this treasure, for it's worth it, there's more to be found. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Matthew chapter 13 verses 45, 46. In today's words, Jesus is saying to seek goodly pearls, and if you find just one unaffordable one, sell all you have to buy it, it's a worthy investment. And when the disciples saw, Jesus, walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, allow me to come unto you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water, to go to Jesus. Matthew chapter 14 verses 26 to 29. What did Jesus say to do here? First of all, he said, Be of good cheer, be not afraid, seeing it is recorded that they all cried out for fear. Yes, they cried out for fear. I asked the Lord what are you saying here in this directive? And he led me to 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 where it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, or love in its matured state, cast out fear, because fear has torment. 
he that has fear in him is not made perfect in love. Though the disciples cried out for fear, fear couldn't come in the presence of our God, who is love itself. Jesus is saying here, if God is in you, who is love, then it's impossible for fear, with its torment, to influence us. Next Jesus says, come, come out into the deep, come operate in the supernatural without fear. As it is written, the Father that live in me, he does the works. Surely, surely, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. This is simply God answering the prayers we pray when we say, Your will be done in earth, earth in vessels, as it is in heaven. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4, 5. John chapter 14 verses 10, 12. But Jesus answered and said to the scribes and Pharisees, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Matthew chapter 15 verse 3. Most people think that Jesus was just talking to them of old, but I assure you, that we are to yet obey his word to get rid of our modern-day traditions in the local church immediately, and do his commandment while we have time. This people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude, and said to them, Hear and understand, not that which goes into the mouth defile a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. Matthew chapter 15 verses 8 to 11, 19. In today's words, Jesus is saying to come near him with your heart to worship him, not just with good-sounding talented vocals, then he says aggressively, hear and understand what really defiles a man in God's eyes. Let the Pharisees alone, they are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Matthew chapter 15 verse 14. What did Jesus say to do? Don't go back and forth with others who aren't enlightened. Leave these types of people alone as it was then so it is now. We aren't to argue with church leaders or their members, even if they come at us first. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, able to teach, patient, also, strive not about words to no profit, but to the overturning of the hearers. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts, and cried unto, Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, you son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Matthew chapter 15 verses 22, 23, emphasis added. What is Jesus showing us here to do? But to keep quiet, though we should be asked many requests outside of the will of God, for as we can see, his action is speaking louder than words. But Jesus answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Matthew chapter 15 verse 26. In the next verse we can clearly see that the woman from Canaan didn't deny Jesus' statement that her and her people are compared to dogs. For she said, Truth Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Emphasis added. Dogs in scripture are defined as this. As a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly, or foolishness and silliness, Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11. The Holy Spirit had Paul to elaborate on this when he said in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 22, For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein, and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Emphasis added. Obviously, the Lord knew this for him to call her that, then she agreed. This scripture also teaches us that, healing is the believer's daily bread, and though some people don't want God but only what he has to offer, he'll still reward anyone's faith though they be outside of his covenant, or a covenant breaker. But and if he should decide to heal them, it would be on his own accord, not the decision of his servants. The Lord also wants to remind us of his word which he is still saying today, that, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways.
for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. The only remedy to this problem would be this. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James chapter 1 verses 7, 8, 4 to 8. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and gloomy. O oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? Matthew chapter 16 verses 6, 12. In today's words, Jesus is saying to predict or know the signs of the times you're in as one would predict the weather. Then Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not caution them against the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Matthew chapter 16 verses 6, 12. This is still happening today. Many don't know it but they're operating under this modern-day Pharisee and Sadducee influence. To better explain this, if it's not the doctrine of Christ, it's another doctrine we all should steer clear of it by taking heed and being aware what isn't his teaching instructions. Beware of these individuals even as Christ the Lord told us. Then said Jesus to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever will save his life, shall lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake, shall find it. Matthew chapter 16 verses 24, 25. What is Jesus saying for us to do here? But to deny ourselves daily, for Paul, being an example says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 31, I die daily, and that, for your sake, Lord, we are killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, Romans chapter 8 verse 36, Psalms 44 to 22. This is explained in this, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, emphasis added. Jesus also says for us to next, take up our crosses daily and follow his example. Our crosses are described in this, God is the Lord, which has showed us light, vine the sacrifice, us, with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Psalm chapter 118 verse 27. This light which he has showed us, was his recorded examples of how he want us to be towards God and our fellow man, and that we're to willingly cling to our crosses of suffering and shame for his sake, knowing that this life come and go as a vapor, but only those who do the Father's will, will be rewarded. While Peter was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed, Peter. James and John, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear you him. Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. Here we can see the Heavenly Father showing them, as well as us today, that he indeed is speaking through his Son. Here he confirms it by saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear you him. So, I say, we should all act on his counsel and hear him. And Jesus came and touched, Peter, James and John, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. Matthew chapter 17 verse 7. In today's words, Jesus is saying to us as he did to them, Arise, get up and don't be afraid of anything. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and said, Why could not we cast the devil out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove from here to another place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Howbeit this kind go not out, or come forth, but by prayer and fasting Matthew chapter 17 verses 19 to 21. What did Jesus say to do? Renounce unbelief, have the spirit of faith, speak to your mountains to relocate, don't keep silent, and do no that there are all types of different demons possessing the people, so don't forget to fast coupled with prayer, when working the field of the world to drive them all out. Notwithstanding, unless we should offend, the tribute money collectors, go you to the sea, and cast a hook, and take the fish that first comes up, and when you have opened his mouth, you shall find a piece of money, take that, and give to them for me and you. Matthew chapter 17 verse 27. The Lord elaborated on this through Peter and Paul, when he wrote to us all, saying, Submit yourselves to every ordinance, or instituted creations, of man for the Lord's sake, 
whether it be to the king, as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. Give, therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 13, Romans chapter 13 verse 7. But unto those in any position of authority he says, to rulers, know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will, are not God in heaven, and rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in his hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand him? You shall not rule over him, or God's creation, with rigor, or severity, cruelty, harshness, but shall fear your God. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother, or anyone, in your heart. Rob not the poor, because he is poor. Neither oppress the afflicted in the gate, or city, for the Lord will plead their cause, and spoil, take away from, the soul of those that spoiled, robbed, them. To soldiers or police, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. And be content with your wages. To judges, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And think you this, O man, that judge them which do such things, and do the same, that you shall escape the judgment of God. To lawyers don't lay burdens on men to grievous to bear, that you yourselves wouldn't touch, and do not take away the key of knowledge, don't hinder any from entering in from knowing of the knowledge. To parents train up a child in the way he or she should go, and when he or she is old, they will not depart from it. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition or mild rebuking warning of the Lord. Provoke not your children to anger, unless they be discouraged. And you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Allow little children to come unto me, Jesus, and don't forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. To children, obey your parents in the Lord, emphasis on, in the Lord, for this is right. Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And last but not least, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Luke chapter 3 verse 14, Luke chapter 11 verses 46, 52, 18, 16, Romans chapter 2 verse 3, John chapter 7 verse 24, Daniel chapter 4 verse 32, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 6, Leviticus chapter 25 verse 43, Zechariah chapter 7 verse 10, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 22. Matthew chapter 7 verse 29, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, Colossians chapter 3 verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 19, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, Colossians chapter 3 verse 20, 1 John chapter 5 verse 21 KJV. Surely, I, Jesus, say to you, except you be converted, and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verses 3, 4. Here Jesus says, by way of the Father, be converted, become as humble as a little child, so we can be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This can only come by renewing your minds with his eternal word. And whoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receive me. Matthew chapter 18 verse 5. In today's words, Jesus is saying to receive an orphan child in his name and by doing so, you're receiving him. Woe to the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense come. Wherefore, if your hand or your foot cause you to sin, cut them off, and cast them from you. It is better for you to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Matthew chapter 18 verses 7, 8. In today's words, Jesus is saying to cut off someone you're connected to who's offending you, and throw them far away from yourself. Enter into life eternal with severed parts if you have to, it's just that serious, don't let anyone pull you in the opposite direction. And if your eye cause you to sin, pluck it out, and cast it from you, it is better for you to enter into life with one eye, 
rather than having two eyes, to be cast into hellfire. Matthew chapter 18 verse 9. This is simply saying, and if your brother or family member, whose your right eye shall cause you to sin, pluck him or her out, and cast him or her from you. For it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish, and not that your whole body should be cast into hell. When hearing this, you have to ask yourself, who in your life is that eye, hand or foot? And if it's hard to truly physically do this, then please know it would be just that hard to cut out of your life, drop and walk away from a family member, friends, husband, wife and or children. This walk is just that serious. For it is written, and everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Matthew chapter 19 verse 29. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. In today's words Jesus is saying not to look over or neglect a small child, physically or spiritually, for their angels always appear before the Father to report any wrong actions against them. How think you? If a man has a hundred sheep, and one of them is gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine, and go to the mountains, and seek that which is gone astray? Matthew chapter 18 verses 10, 12. In today's words, Jesus is saying to pastors to leave the large congregation and go visit that one who hasn't been showing up for some time. Even so it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Matthew chapter 18 verse 14. Our God says here, This is my will, will you not do my will? This is what I want. He's also saying, Woe to the world because of offenses, and, Woe to the pastors who cause my sheep to go astray. Woe is defined in the Greek and Hebrew language as an exclamation of pain and grief. If you're hearing or reading this, please take a moment to truly consider his heart's cry, that he's counting on us to be watchful and steer clear of any offense. And if we did offend someone and know it, it's not too late to try to reach out to them, being godly sorry and apologetic. Even if you can't find them, if they're deceased, or, you lost contact. Or say you do find them and they reject your action of reaching out to them, I know he'll take this into consideration. That you even had a heart, to even ask him for forgiveness, or even try to reconcile with another. Remember, it's never too late, while we have breath in our bodies, to get it right with one another, for this is what he delights to see. Moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he shall hear you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with you one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church, but if he shall neglect to hear the church, let him be to you as a heathen and a publican. Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 18. What is Jesus saying to do here? But to simply tell, your brother in Christ, his fault between you and him alone. If he will not hear you out, then, take with you one or two more spirit-filled brethren to tell him or her their trespassing fault, again. If they still won't agree to resolve the issue, then, tell it to the church, the body of Christ. If the matter gets this far with no compromise, resolve agreement or concord, just consider that individual to be as a heathen and a publican, which are harsh, lovers of division and offenses. Read, Romans chapter 16 verse 17 to see how to deal with these types of individuals. Surely, I say to you, whatever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, that if two of you shall agree on earth, concerning anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are assembled in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew chapter 18 verses 18 to 20. In today's words, Jesus is saying in your prayers, don't forget to bind that which is evil and loose that which is good, also to pair up with another in prayer, for there is power in agreement. Then came Peter to Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said to him, I say not to you, until seven times, but, until seventy times seven. 
Then his Lord, having called him, the forgiven servant, and said to him, O you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt, because you desired me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due to him. So likewise, shall my heavenly Father do to you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Matthew chapter 18